How many people here have watched soccer games before? <laughs> yeah, almost everyone. So those of you who have, we have noticed that soccer players can perform sophisticated body movements and interact with the ball at the same time without losing their balance. One way for players to interact with the ball is by hitting it using their heads, known as soccer headers. On average, soccer players have over 400 balls per year, which means thousands over a few years and tens of thousands throughout their career. Imagine, in each one of these headers, there is a fastball coming at your head at a speed from 10 to 20 meters per second. That type of repeated impact cannot be good, can it? One study suggests that soccer headers can cause short-term balance deficits, which may turn into long-term ones if the player's heads are hit repeatedly. This makes us wonder what happens inside our head that causes balance deficits. However, our current knowledge cannot pinpoint the exact mechanism. Balance is a complex function that involves different parts of our body. Among the most important ones is the vestibular system, which sits in our inner ear and senses our head's linear and rotational accelerations, just like the motion sensors in our smartphones. It does this by converting head motion into neural signals, which our brain then processes to perceive head motion and generate body movements to balance ourselves. Some studies suggest that impairment of the vestibular system plays a key role in balance deficits. My first proposed study will investigate the source of vestibular disruption from headaches, whether it's in the vestibular sensors, the brain, or both. To do this, we will measure subjects' abilities to perceive head rotations before and after soccer headers in two different ways. The first way is by rotating the heads mechanically to generate a real head rotation. The second way is by applying electrical currents to the vestibular system to directly modulate the neural signals into the brain and generate an illusionary head rotation. Based on some previous studies, we anticipate reduced feelings in both real and illusionary head rotations, which will indicate that both the vestibular sensors and the brain may be affected. The outcomes of these studies will help us better understand which parts of the vestibular function are affected by soccer headers. Overall, my research may directly lead to more sensitive task methods to detect vestibular changes after head impacts. The hope is, in the future, when we watch soccer games again, we will no longer worry that our favorite player will suffer from balance deficits either during or after their athletic career. Thank you. Thank you.